Hey, my Dell XPS 13. You might recognize this uh, a couple years ago, I think it was. I upgraded the SSD in it and I did a video on it. Um, right now it's powered up. I'm gonna power it off because I am going to install this. This is a Wise Tiger. It says creativity is unlimited, and I guess it is uh, when you name your product the Wise Tiger. Uh, but the Wise Tiger is actually a Wi-Fi 6 card, and it uses Intel's AX200 uh, Wi-Fi 6 chip set, which it seems to be one of the standards that it works in Linux and Windows really well. So this is a little uh, Wi-Fi card that fits inside of the Dell laptop. Uh, and I'm gonna take out the old one and replace it with this, and it should be a drop-in replacement. The drivers might be a little interesting, but uh, we'll see that when we get to it. Now, before I started taking this apart, I, I actually did some speed tests using iPerf3, and you can see those on the uh, screen now. Um, I tested iPerf3 from my MacBook Pro on, over the wired network through my Asus router to the laptop, and it got uh, 200 to 300 megabits uh, was typical. Um, it's interesting because I've actually tested uh, another MacBook Pro, a 2016 MacBook Pro connected to mine, and that one was able to get about 900 to 950 megabits. So it could be the antennas, it could be the, the chipset, uh, who knows what it is, but I'm going to put in this Wi-Fi 6 chip uh, for two reasons. One of them is to see if it can get better speed out of the same antennas in this laptop. Uh, connected through my home network and the other is to see Well, I'll tell you that at the end of the video. All right, so uh, first I need to make sure that this laptop is powered off now I have this fun problem on this laptop. It's a BIOS issue. Whenever I shut it down, it just turns back on. I have no idea why. Um, I tried updating the BIOS from Dell. I tried all these tricks and things, and it says like TPM module not detected. Who knows what that is, uh, but I'm going to just hold down the power button for 10 seconds and see where that gets me. Nice picture of the elephants there. All right, so I did that. We'll see if this actually shuts down probably won't and it'll be running and I might shock myself and blow up this laptop but we'll see what happens anyway to get this thing apart you got to flip it over and it has a few screws on the back this is a t5 screwdriver um, I have a few kits with different uh, Torx screw sizes but it's a t5 and that's all you need for these screws on the back here and I'm just gonna take them off put them aside Anyway, so we get all these screws off. It looks like there's eight total. And then there's another hidden screw. Dell, the Dell engineer that designed this was probably like, oh, I'm gonna get somebody with this. There's this little flap here, uh, the flap with all the service tag and all that. And there's, there's actually supposed to be a screw in here. <laughs> I, I guess I forgot to put my screw back in uh, when I did the SSD. So there is no screw there. Uh, but if there was, it's a number zero screw and you'd take that out. So lucky for me, there's no screw. For you, there probably will be. Uh, the next step is to pop this uh, back cover off. Now, ideally, you'd use a spudger or something, but I'm just gonna use my fingernails um, to pop all these little snaps and work my way around the sides here. And then the back comes off. Now, I mentioned this in my other video, these two clips here uh, let's see, there's a clip here and a clip here, uh, three clips here. These are kind of beefy. So you, you, I think I fix it or somebody shows like pull up the back first. What I think is the best way is to pull up on the front and then those clips that are really thick kind of pop out easy. If you pull up from the back, you're pulling against these clips. And uh, unlike the front ones, they're very beefy. So I don't like doing it that way. I like to pulling up on the front and then popping the back anyways. There is the inside of this computer. Now, I put in a WD Blue SSD. I put in a 500 gig SSD because this computer, I think this model came with 128, which was way too little for what I needed to do with my testing and VMs and games. Um, and here's the little Wi-Fi chip. Uh, this is called the Killer 1535. And I'll take it out and then we'll do a little comparison of these two chips. Um, so first of all, there's this little, little screw here holding it down along with a cover that screws pretty tight uh, this is a number zero phillips screw this is my little my little radio shack screwdriver that i've had since i was like 11 years old i think i bought a set from radio shack it's fun having an engineer for a dad now there's two uh wi-fi connections here and 
I think iFixit's directions also have you disconnecting the battery here. You can do that if you want, um, but I am going to use a spudger here to pop these guys off. Uh, these are the little Wi-Fi antennas, and there's two of them. There we go. All right, both of them are off, and we can pull this Wi-Fi card. On the left, we have the old, the old Wi-Fi card. Uh, it's the Killer 1535, and on the right, we have the brand new one, the Intel AX200 chipset. Now again, this is from, what is this company? Wise Tiger. There's, if you look for the Intel chip, you're going to find a lot of manufacturers that make these things, but none of them are actually called Intel. Uh, Intel doesn't package it up and sell it, uh, but it is the Intel chip that is inside of here. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the computer now, get it underneath, underneath the two antenna. All right, so slide it down, get these antennas plugged in. Finally got both of those in. This black one was having a really fun time trying to get back down. And I'm gonna put this little cover back on. Everything else is looking good here. Here's the old card, took it out. And now let's put on the back cover again. I'm gonna start at the top just cause it has those larger clips on it. And I'm gonna snap it in around the sides here. And I'm going to pick it up and make sure that everything is snapped in securely. Looks good. Looks good. All right. All right, now uh, we got that all sorted out. There's all the tools we used. Uh, obviously, you'd put the screw back in here if you actually had it, but I do not have one, so there's that. And it's probably running right now because of, like I said, that BIOS issue that I've had. And yeah, it's, it was actually sitting there running the whole time that I was doing that. Probably not the most recommended way to do a computer repair with the computer actually running. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and restart this thing uh, because I want it to pick up the fact that there's a new card. And I'll show you how that goes in just a second. And here you can see that... Uh, Oh, if, if my light doesn't reflect. This is that BIOS issue, and I cannot uh, get through it. I can't record the screen or anything, so here's what it looks like. Someday I might figure it out, but until that day, this laptop is just destined to always be running forever and ever and ever. I'm going to cut that part out because I don't want you to see my password. Uh, but let's see what happens here. If I go... It says there's no internet connection. <laughs> the last time I used Windows extensively was Windows XP. So I know enough to get around and, and I know enough to Google things, but uh, let's see what's going on here. Network. Adapter. Let's see if we can see anything in here. Uh, there's a kernel debug adapter, Wi-Fi virtual adapter, Bluetooth. Oh, here we go. All right, so we got the actual adapter here. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 AX200. And it's saying it's uh, 802.3. Um, it looks like everything is has been detected here, and it even has. Does it have an IP address? It does. 228. So it's already connected to my network. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So Windows did pick up the driver for this automatically. It looks like because when I booted up, this was not actually connected uh, to my home network. Uh, so anyway, it got the connection automatically, and now I would like to see. I'm going to set this up as a server. So I'm going to say iperf3.exe-s. So I'm going to check that on my Mac uh, with iperf3-c and connect to it from my Mac and check the speeds that I'm getting on this Windows laptop. It looks like it's faster, so getting 300 to 400 megabits per second, but I'm not getting that uh, 900 megabits per second that I, I seem to be able to get from my Mac to my Mac. And I'm also going to try, um, I'm going to try doing uh, dash C and connecting to my Mac. So I'm going to do the same thing on here. Uh, so that address is 10.0.100.118. And let's see how fast we go on there. And my Mac actually is plugged in and is using Wi-Fi. So I'm going to see what the IP address is for the other connection too. Uh, the other address is... 
213. So I'm also going to try connecting to 213 and see if there's any difference there. So that, I believe, is the Wi-Fi on my Mac. And I'm probably getting some interference with these. The two computers are about uh, maybe six inches from each other. All right, and the reason why I did all this, uh, I, I did want to improve the Wi-Fi on my local network. And it looks like that uh, this is a slight improvement. And I, I you know, this, this Wise Tiger card, it, it's good. Um, I'm happy with it. Uh, straight from China, I guess, but uh, it's, it's a good little card. Uh, but the real reason I wanted to do this was to see if I could create a direct Wi-Fi 6 connection between my Dell laptop and this, the Compute Module 4 from Raspberry Pi. This has a built-in PCIe slot, and I actually already have this ED up PCIe card working. And I, I could test this card. It got 930 megabits on my local Wi-Fi network, which is an 802.11 AC network. Uh, so I want to see if I can do a direct connection between this uh, compute module from Raspberry Pi and this Dell laptop and see if I can get beyond one gigabit Wi-Fi networking. If I can do that, I could take this uh, compute module and turn it into a wireless NAS that's actually faster than most gigabit NASs on the market today, which I think would be pretty cool. If you want to see how that goes, please hit subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this board and on some different projects that you can do with the Compute Module 4 and its new capabilities uh, brought about by this nice, fancy PCIe slot. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling. So I have my Dell Latitude. It's not a Latitude. This is not a Latitude laptop. Let's try that again. All right. Um, you can't see what I'm doing right now because the camera is turned off.